news, everyone. Today's the day where you get to decide what character I'm going to sculpt. Charizard. Big lip. Smithers. Rick and Morty. SpongeBob. Unfortunately, I did have to guess ahead of time, and I already guessed Ren and Stimpy. But that's good because you don't have to worry about thanking me. I've already guessed you were very thankful. So basically, we're going to take this image and we're going to turn it into this. Turn around, you sick little monkey! But how? Simple. First, we're going to take our reference image and then we're going to break it down into jelly beans, pipe cleaners and balls. What kind of balls? Chef's choice. Put that all together and away we go. And just like any sculpt, you're going to want to begin with what's commonly referred to as a blockout. It's the part where you take a bunch of simple shapes, mash them all together, with your main focus being on building a good silhouette from all angles. As an example, if we were making a wolf, then this would be a great silhouette to have. But we're not making a wolf, so this is a terrible silhouette to have. Also, I'm pretty sure I'm saying wolf weird. I feel like it's meant to be wolf, but I'm definitely saying wolf. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is to not let yourself get sidetracked. But maybe it's wolf. Hmm. There is only one real way to finish any project that you've started, and that's by moving as fast as humanly possible. I've never gone that fast. No one has. We need to be finishing our project right before our brain has a chance to realise that what we're working on is boring, and that starting a new project would not only be the best course of action, but would be pretty fun right about now. But you can't stop at one. You want to drink another woman? Choices, yeah? I think it's about time for the return of a fan favourite segment called Did You Know? Where I sure hope the answer is no, because otherwise you're about to be very bored. So Ren and Snippy are obviously animals, but what kind of animals? Well, Ren's a chihuahua. Which, sure, I guess if you squint hard enough, anyone can be a chihuahua. But Stimpy's the more confusing of the pair because he's meant to be a cat. The inspiration for Ren actually came from this Elliot Erwitt postcard of a chihuahua wearing a sweater. Whereas Stimpy's design actually came about because the show's creator was trying to redraw the cats from the gruesome twosome from memory. And now you're probably wondering, well what on earth is the gruesome twosome? It's a Warner Brothers cartoon from 1945 that featured Tweety Bird before he was permanently paired with Sylvester. It's a show I wouldn't really recommend recommend going <laughs> going out of your way to watch. It's kind of just two gross horny cats trying to kiss a female cat. Don't worry about it. We're moving on. You'd like a pair of nylons, huh? Then honey, that's a butter kiss. <laughs> Cool. Now at this point, hopefully you can see on screen that my shapes are starting to come together, and despite the simplicity, it does resemble the reference image. If you're new to sculpting and you've been trying to follow along at home, you might be wondering why your shapes look more like someone duct taped two potatoes together. That's one fine looking barbecue pit. WHY DOESN'T MINE LOOK LIKE THAT?! Try not to worry about it. It's a phase that everyone goes through, and it really just comes down to practice. I mean, I personally have been doing this for years, and almost every time I start a new project, I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing. And you're probably like, yeah, that's a really good point. You suck. And might I say that I do have feelings, and they are very fragile. So now that our blockout's finished, we can move on to everyone's favourite part, whatever comes next. For me personally, that means cleaning up my shapes so I can then join them together and finally start to actually sculpt. Now there are many different ways to join meshes together in ZBrush. We of course have Dynamesh, we have Remesh by Union, we have... Like, like what else do you do? Just those two things. Just those two things! <laughs> okay, that was a lie, just because I wanted to use that Spider-Verse clip. So to make it up to you, here is a list I compiled of all the ways you can merge in ZBrush. Isn't when a TV show becomes popular, companies are usually quick to capitalise on the success. For Ren and Stimpy, this meant games. Loads of terrible games. However, one of them that did catch my eye was Nickelodeon's 3D movie Maker. Sure, its controls were terrible and the options were severely limited, but I was far too busy making some of the worst Ren and Stimpy cartoons anyone had ever seen to worry about whether the games were good or not. And yeah, I get it. Put a gun to my head and I'm picking Simpsons Cartoon Studio every time, but I'm not here to review the Simpsons Cartoon Studio. 9 out of 10. No, I'm here to talk about... Um... Hmm. I guess I don't really know what I'm here to talk about. To be honest, I kind of forgot a little while ago and I just sort of kept talking. It's more like sometimes that I just get really sad and I feel like nobody's really listening. Moving on. Now that our model's finished, we can finally move on to texture painting, or as I like to call it, colouring in for adults. Mm. Patent pending. 
Throw your model into Substance Painter or Mari if you're super fancy, and then start praying that you can just throw on a smart material because otherwise this is going to take a not insignificant amount of time. Oh, looks like that didn't work. I like to start off by throwing on base colors so I get a general sense of where everything will go and then I can focus on building up paint layers. Here's a top tip for all you top tip enthusiasts. Periodically viewing your model without any lighting information can be a great insight as to whether you're adding enough detail into your texture maps. If the raw diffuse map has enough color variation to show my model's form without any lighting present, then I know I'm on the right track. As an example, on the left hand side, we're looking at the model with just basic colors applied, whereas on the right, we have my final painted diffuse map. In both views, we're only looking at the base color without any lighting information, but you can see the one on the right clearly shows the model's form as it has a lot more color variation painted in. This is an especially important concept when it comes to things like human skin, because being able to achieve a level of complexity through your diffuse map can go a long way towards achieving a level of realism and interest. Look, I guess we really learned something this Christmas, Jacob. No, we didn't, Dad. No, we didn't. Now that we're all done with texturing, we can take our model into our rendering package of choice and finally start to light. No pressure at all, but if you mess this part up, then everything has been a complete waste of time. I personally like to start with a standard three-point lighting setup, and then I'll just continue to add lights until Maya eventually crashes. One light, two lights. Oh, there we go. And that's it, we're all done. Doesn't time just fly by? Make sure you tune in next week where I attempt to cry myself to sleep, except whoa, -oh, I'm an insomniac. If you've stuck around this long, you can try checking out some of my other videos. They're probably not as good, or they're better. I don't know.